Okay, this should be a quick video. Uh, it's an answer to a question on boundary value problems for this this equation here, a nonlinear uh, nonlinear problem. So I'm not going to bother with any uh, kind of introduction, um, recording an recording of an introduction, and we'll just jump into it. So this is the differential equation uh, he had. It's uh, slightly nonlinear. Uh, and the boundary conditions he had was theta at s is equal to zero is zero, and the derivative at the boundary, which I called L, which was uh, 600 in his case, was equal to some number k. And uh, these constants uh, c and k uh, he gave to me, and these are basically uh, the result of, of those calculations here. So this is the boundary condition for the derivative, and this is that constant of proportionality in the differential equation itself. So let me code up this system of equations uh, to use our initial value solver. Okay, so I've coded up the system of differential equations here. So let me run that. And so the problem comes down to finding the initial derivative. We need, uh, it's a second order differential equation, so we need an initial value at, uh, for the function, which we have. It's, you know, theta is equal to zero at zero, but we don't know the first derivative. So I just put in the value one here. So let's run that. Um, this is the function we kind of get back. Um, <clears throat> as nonlinear problems go, this isn't too bad. Um, all I do is basically extend the, the height here at the end of the, you know, basically the slope goes up as I crank up this uh, first derivative number here. So, so we can use our, our the, the, the while loop type of thing we did in our initial video on this problem to solve this, but um, I just wanted to give a little bit of information on how you might solve this problem if you had no idea, if this was maybe a little um, not as well behaved, how you might want to solve this. So this problem was a cantilever, um, and I assume that this theta is some sort of angular deflection. And in particular, it's a relatively small angle, so that this cosine of theta can be approximated as one, and that just makes the problem really easy to solve. In fact, let me come down here and put in a new cell and just kind of uh, type out how I would approach it. Okay, again, small angle approximation. Our derivative, our differential equation uh, reduces to this. So it's just basically a linear thing now. Uh, second derivative equals a constant, which we can integrate by hand to get a, an equation for the first derivative. Um, so it's just equal to minus c times s uh, plus some sort of constant of integration. And since we know the value of this function at s equals s equal to l, we can calculate this constant of integration. And um, we could use that as our starting point here. So my guess for the initial value is going to be um, c times l plus k. And off of the recording, I copy these values in here. So this is the, this should be 600, not 700. Um, kind of the range of integration. K is our boundary condition, and C is this um, proportionality constant that goes into the differential equation. So let's just print that out. Print uh, C times L plus K. So that's going to be my starting guess, about 0 0.117, 0 .0, sorry, 0 0.00117. And down here, rather than plot the function itself, I can plot its derivative. So I'm going to change this to the second row, which is the derivative of the function. So the derivative is all over the place. Um, let's also plot our boundary value uh, at the end, just for, for visualization purposes. So plt.plot uh, l comma k, and let's make it a dot. So you can see here, we got some uh, work to do. So let's come back up here and make our initial guess. Where did I write my initial guesses? Here it is. 0 0.00117, is that my, close enough? So already we're not too bad. We just have to make this, we have to adjust that initial derivative such that we touch this uh, blue dot. So, um, what I'm going to do is come up here and instead of printing out this thing, I'm just going to get rid of this. And I want to print out my desired boundary condition, which is K. So come down here, print desired boundary, uh, <coughs> excuse me, is equal to K. Print 
uh, I don't know, from solver um, that will be equal to solution dot y uh, row number one and the last element of it. So here we go. This is the number. Uh, this is the number that we're aiming for, and this is our uh, the number we're actually getting. Let's multiply the. <coughs> excuse me. Let's multiply this by ten thousand, so we don't have to kind of worry about the decimal places. So, ten thousand times that. 10,000 times that, 10,000. So we just need to can't kind of keep tweaking that until these numbers agree. And we can do this with that while loop like we did before, but we have to know a little bit more about it. So let's see what happens if we, I don't know, um, bump up this number. Where, 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 where are we? So instead of uh, 0.117, let's do 0.11, let's just do 1.2. Okay, that seems to make things worse. So let's lower it down. So instead of 117, let's make it 115. Better? Um, let's lower it a little bit more. So 1145. Looks, looks like we need to come down a little bit more. So let's go 1145. We're getting closer. In fact, we're pretty damn close. Um, so obviously you could refine this to whatever tolerance you want, but I'm going to call this good enough for this video since this is just kind of a quick um, kind of spur of the moment thing. So let's just copy this and plot our actual solution. So come down here, plot, and this is not row one now, it's just row zero. So this is what our solution basically looks like. Okay, so I'm not going to bother with any uh, sort of outro. I'm just going to clean this up and put it on GitHub and kind of document the steps that I, I did to, to get to this result. So see you later.